you could definitely hear that excitement in the background there. Uh, tell us about the crew members. Oh, actually, I want to I want to pause for just a moment because we are seeing vehicles pitching downrange. The very first all orbital civilian crew launching right now. Inspiration yeah, four. Now setting the standard for civilian orbital space flight. seconds. Pullouts indicate nominal. Historic mission playing the Inspiration 4 crew. Onboard Dragon and Falcon 9. Late deal with the crew in the council. We're into the throttle down, into the throttle bucket. Stay drawing throttle down. Throttling down in preparation for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. And then the Double flight. Nine is supersonic. Max stage speed. one, throttle up. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We throttle back up and one Bravo, the call out from space. That's one of the abort sequences. That is a nominal call. Everything continues to be good. Looks like a smooth ride for the crew. Acceleration. Everything continues to look nominal. Merlin engines are throttling down for G limiting. Four G's, we're holding it there for the crew. Major event coming up will be main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation. Looking at the second stage engine nozzle and an ignition of the second stage. And Miko. Stage separation. Officially, the Inspiration 4 crew are now on their way to space. First stage booster there on the left-hand side of your screen is making its uh, way back down to Earth. The grid fins have popped out to assist with the steering. It will be making a landing attempt on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, uh, which is parked out uh, in holding position in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so we have a couple of views on Acquisition screen. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. Uh, as Kate mentioned, the left-hand side is a view from the top of our first stage looking down. That has already separated from the second stage, and it's making its way back to Earth. The velocity of the first Dragon stage SpaceX trajectory nominal. is being tracked on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. On the right-hand side of your screen is a view of our second stage Merlin vacuum engine. On the opposite end of the, that engine is the second stage and the crew, which sits on top of the second stage. Everything looks to be going Normal, uh, <laughs> normally uh, with them, uh, and you can also track the velocity on the second stage on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. And we also have awesome views of the crew inside of their capsule as well. I'm pretty sure during first stage ascent, I saw Dr. Okay, Cyan Proctor. Nominal. I'm pretty sure I saw Dr. Cyan Proctor give us a two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she enjoyed this ride that she's been waiting for her entire life. Yes. Uh, um, one notable thing, too, is we're getting some twilight views. Um, the sun just set in Florida, but we're high enough um, uh, up where uh, the light around the horizon is also reflecting off of very high altitude objects, such as the first and second stages. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Love to hear that call out. Trajectory nominal from the guidance engineer. 
Also notice we're really up there now, well past 100 kilometers. Acquisition of signal, New Hampshire. Just before that view switched, we saw some uh, teammate fist bumps going on there inside <laughs> of the cabin. <laughs> Yeah, they look like they're having a fun ride there. Um, and their journey isn't over. We've got about seven more minutes until uh, Dragon separates from the second stage. Yes, uh, next milestone for this mission is actually going to be happening on the first stage. Um, it's going to be performing a re-entry burn that's going to be coming up around the T plus seven minute and um, 30 second mark. Uh, that burn is used to slow down the first stage before it re-enters the denser parts of the atmosphere. Um, a few minutes later, it will execute a landing burn and make an attempt to land on our drone ship that's currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Dragon copies. So Brothers. far, sorry. I'm just going to say, so far, everything looking great for the Inspiration Four crew hearing that everything is proceeding nominally there with the second stage, which is what you see on the right-hand side. That it, proportion is nominal. I was just going to say that MVAC engine uh, we just heard now is looking nominal. About a minute left to go before the first stage performs its uh, first burn. And on your left-hand side, looking at the first stage, you may see uh, those white puffs. Extraordinary uh, those are human possibility. possibility. I want to bring back in Garrett Reisman, a senior advisor for SpaceX, also an astronaut himself, to give us some context for the incredible images that you are seeing. Garrett, as someone who spent a significant amount of time in space, what is the ride like? What are they feeling at this moment? Well, boy, well, first of all, I'd like to summarize what you've seen so far. The context I would give you is so far, so good. Uh, you never fully exhale when you watch one of these launches until the engine shuts down and you're up in the safe orbit. But uh, but they're feeling a lot of Gs. Uh, at, right before they stage, right before the, the first stage falls away and the second stage engine lights up that you're seeing glowing there on the screen right now, you get a big kick in the pants and, you, and you're up at about four or five Gs. And now they're building up to about four or five Gs once again. That's a lot. You know, in the shuttle, we only pulled about three. Uh, so they're pulling significantly more than that. And it feels like you got an elephant sitting on your chest and it's 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 kind of hard to breathe. You have to work at it. Now, this crew um, uh, trained in the centrifuge, just like uh, we trained astronauts in the past and, and the Russians trained their cosmonauts. So they knew what to expect. But that's uh, that is an a unique uh, feeling. So these astronauts are currently on their way 360 miles above the Earth. That's actually, for our viewers, 100 miles higher than the International Space Station orbits. And tell us, why was this altitude chosen, selected for this mission? I think because they could, the Falcon 9 has the performance to throw the Dragon that high, and why not go higher? I think, uh, you know, the view is better. You see more of the Earth. Um, it's, it's not quite as high as the shuttle went when it went up to Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope. But I know from my friends that went up to Hubble, I, didn't, I just went to the space station, I never went to Hubble, but uh, my friends that did, did describe the view as significantly better. So I'm sure they're going to enjoy that. Plus, they have a really cool window that they get to look at it, so they're going to enjoy that as well. And I'm sure that there are people looking at this thinking how much they wish that they had one of those four seats. I'm wondering if you can tell us more about the crew. They really have, each of them brings an extraordinary piece to this puzzle. That's true. So, so Jared is the commander, and he's the one that really started this whole thing. He's footing the bill and, uh, and also raising a lot of money for a great charity, St. Jude Hospital. Uh, but he selected three people to come along with him, representing different uh, aspects. There's hope, generosity, and entrepreneurialism. Uh, so he picked hope. Uh, Haley Arsenault is a cancer survivor and is now a, a, a physician's assistant at, uh, at St. Jude's Hospital. Uh, you have uh, Chris is uh, an aerospace engineer who, uh, who donated. So he represents generosity because he's one of the many people that donated to St. Jude's. And then um, uh, you have uh, Cyan Proctor, who represents the entrepreneurial spirit, because she does a lot of work with art and also education related to space. So he wanted the, to represent all those different things and really take advantage of this opportunity to not just go on a joyride, but really to reach a lot of people and, as the name of the mission suggests, inspire a lot of people. <laughs> 